Today, November 8th, Canadians proudly mark Indigenous Veterans Day. It is a day to commemorate the unique contributions and sacrifices that First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples have made serving in the Canadian Armed Forces. From the First World War to the Korean War, and still very much today, Indigenous peoples have volunteered their diverse talent and skills, with more than 12,000 Indigenous women and men answering the call of duty to serve Canada with pride and honour. Even though they donned the same uniform as their comrade in arms, and upheld the same oath to defend Canada, at home they were denied the very rights and freedoms they fought to protect. So as we remember their courage and determination during the world's darkest hours, all Canadians should recognize the barriers like racism they overcame just so they could enlist. Many of them served on the front lines, and many of them never returned home. We honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice to defend the freedom we all enjoy today. And we must do better to learn their stories. Stories like that of Private Thomas Godshare, a member of the Anishwabe First Nations who fought valiantly and died at Vimy Ridge, or that Indigenous veterans like Mary Grey Eyes, who broke down barriers in the Canadian Armed Forces, or of Tommy Prince and his legendary bravery. But there are many others whose stories are not as well known. For over a century, thousands of Indigenous peoples have stepped up and contributed their unique skills to the Canadian Armed Forces. They have assumed leadership roles in fields across the Canadian Armed Forces, from engineering to medicine, mechanics to system specialists. Today is a day for all Canadians to seek out their stories, to celebrate each of their contributions and sacrifices, and to honour their passion, dedication and service, which is a model for all of us. Let us take the time to consider, commemorate and celebrate the unique military contributions that Indigenous peoples have made for Canada and continue making today. Let us thank them for their service. Merci pour votre service, lest we forget. Bibliopat. They fought and some died for their homeland They fought and some died, now it's our land Look at his little child, there's no fear in her eyes Could he not show respect for other dads who have died? Take two minutes, would you mind? It's a pittance of time for the boys and the girls who went over In peace may they rest May we never forget why they died It's a pittance of time God forgive me for wanting to strike him Give me strength so as not to be like him My heart pounds in my breast Fingers pressed to my lips My throat wants to ball out My tongue barely resists But two minutes I will bide It's a pittance of time For the boys and the girls who went over In peace may they rest May we never forget why they died It's a pittance of time Battles and fears of their own 
There's a price to be paid If you go, if you stay Freedom's fought for and won In numerous ways Take two minutes, would you mind? It's a pittance of time For the boys and the girls all over May we never forget Our young become vets at the end of the line It's a pittance of time It takes courage to fight In your own war It takes courage to fight Someone else's war Our peacekeepers tell Of their own living hell They bring hope to foreign lands that hate mongers can't kill Take two minutes, would you mind? It's a pittance of time For the boys and the girls who go over In peacetime our best Still don battle dress And lay their lives on the line It's a pittance Lest we forget why they died Take a pittance of time They fought and some died for their homeland They fought and some died, now it's our land Look at his little child, there's no fear in her eyes Could he not show respect for other dads who have died? Take two minutes, would you mind? It's a pittance of time for the boys and the girls who went over In peace may they rest May we never forget why they died It's a pittance of time God for They fought and some died for their homeland They fought and some died, now it's our land Look at his little child, there's no fear in her eyes Could he not show respect for other dads who have died? Take two minutes, would you mind? It's a pittance of time for the boys and the girls who went over In peace may they rest May we never forget why they died It's a pittance of time God forgive me for wanting to strike him Give me strength so as not to be like him My heart pounds in my breast Fingers pressed to my lips My throat wants to bawl out My tongue barely resists But two minutes I will bide It's a pittance of time For the boys and the girls who went over In peace may they rest May we never forget 
why they died. you know, digging the trenches and supplying the infrastructure that was needed. And so you may be ducking from the bullets, but not able to shoot back. They are also deprived of a lot of the supplies they should have had, lack of medical attention. Some of them were told that when they went to join up, that it was a white man's war, and, and they weren't wanted. They were in effect being told, this is not your country. You live here, but don't think this is your country. This is our battle, our country. Adaptation du poem in Flanders Fields de Jean Micklin. Les chants de honneur, les coquelicots, sont passés de l'un à l'autre. Auprès des gras et dans l'espace, les alouettes devenues las. Mais le chant a sifflement des obésières. Nous sommes morts. Nous qui songeons la veille encore. À nos parents, à nos amis. C'est qu'on y reprend ici au champ d'honneur. À vous, jeunes désabusés. À vous, de pardon, Marie de femmes. Et te garder au fond de l'âme. Le goût de vivre en liberté. Accepter le défi, sinon, les coquelicots, c'est final. Au champ d'honneur. Adaptation signée Jean Parisot. Remembrance Day poem. Bodies falling down, shaking the ground, making room for roots to grow. On the battlefield, the poppies grow from right to red, all in a row. A little poppy, as red as it can be, to show that I remember all those who fought for me to be free. Those who fought in war, they saved the people to their core. To save our home and family, they left their loved ones not knowing if they were coming back. I believe that there should not be any wars at any cost, but to spread only peace and love, we will remember. I 
am going to tell you the story about the famous poem in Flanders Field, and how that poem inspired a woman to wear a poppy in remembrance, and how that world began to wear poppies every year. The poem in Flanders Field was written on May 3, 1915, during the First World War by a Canadian soldier named John McCrae. John McCrae was a doctor during the First World War, cheating wounded soldiers who were fighting near Ibris in Belgium. In the west province of Flanders, there was lots of fighting going on in this area. The fields were muddy and had big holes in it, and it was not a very pretty place. But near my in the field where the fighting had stopped, her. lots of flowers were falling in bloom, and one flower that was going everywhere was a poppy. On May 3, 1915, John McCrae was very tired and he was very sad. One of his close friends had just been killed in the fighting. They had to bury him in the field where they buried all the soldiers who were fighting and had died in the fields where the poppies were growing. As John McCrae sat and looked over the landscape, he picked up a pencil and a paper, and this is what he began to write. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses low and low. The narks are placing in the sky. The larks are bravely singing fly. Scales haul amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived a felt dawn, the sunset glow. Loved and loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you with failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders Field. Just as John McCray finished writing his poem, another soldier came up to him. She was delivering the mail, and the mailman handed, handed him some letters, and John McCray gave the soldier his poem, and then he slowly walked away. The soldier led the poem. The story is very good, and he followed John McCray to talk to him about sending the poem to be put in a newspaper or magazine for others to read. World War I ended a few years later in 1918. A woman named Moina Michaels in New York City in, in November 1918, where she was working at the War Secretary's Conference. Two days before November 11th, Moina was taking a break from her work, and she was reading a magazine. In the magazine, she saw the poem in Flanders Fields, and while she was reading the poem, she came up with the idea of wearing a poppy to remember a woman who died. Moina quickly went to the store and bought some fake silk poppies. Moina pinned one to her dress, and she told the other people who arrived for the conference why she was wearing it. They wanted to wear one too. Moina got very excited about the thought of having everyone in the United States to wear the poppy to remember so she was hot so she walked hard every year the trying to call people to wear the poppy in November to remember. A French woman named Madame Guerin was inspired by Moina Michael and her idea of the poppy as a memorial flower so she decided to sell the poppies in France. She thought that the poppy money should go to helping the men and women and children who suffered so much because of the great wars. So other countries, including Canada, began to accept the poppy as a symbol of remembrance. And every year, many of the red poppies are made to be sold so that people like us can remember and people who fight in war can be helped. This is a wonderful story that began with the soldier who was a doctor, and he wrote a poem as he looked over a field of poppies growing between crosses of fallen soldiers, and we remember.
a muffin or a peach, a birthday invitation, a trip to the beach. Peace is gratitude for simple things, like the leaf on dragonfly's wings, a kiss on the cheek, raindrops and dew, a walk in the park, a bowl of hot stew. Peace is holding on to another. Peace is the word you say to a brother. Will you stay with me? Will you be my friend? Will you listen to my story to the very end? Will you wait when I'm slow? Will you calm my fears? Will you sing to the sun to dry my tears? Will you keep me company when I'm all alone? Will you give me shelter when I've lost my home? Pete, you might find peace in a photograph or in a deep boom of a belly laugh. And even in the wake of tragedy, even then you might find her in the rubble of a fallen tower, in the sorrow of your darkest hour, in the hat of a hero, in the loss of a friend. Peace is an offering, not a pulling apart. It's the courage to be a wounded heart. It's a safe place to live. It's the freedom from fear. 
It's a kiss or a hug when you've lost someone dear. So off a cookie. Walk away from a fight. Comfort a friend through the long, dark night. Sing a quiet song. Catch a falling star. May peace walk beside you wherever you are.